So basically what I'm doing today is messing around with burner nozzles. I'm attempting to make a um, an oil burner nozzle that atomizes fluid and we're not going to be able to see the tip of this very good. I'm going to turn it on here and uh, show you what we've got. I don't want to turn it on too high but Basically, that's what we're looking at with that kind of armature speed there. I don't know if the, the frame rate or your computer will allow you to pick that up properly, but that's basically what we're getting there. You can turn it up. And that's just way too much oil. This would like run a 747 Airbus with <laughs> that much fuel spraying out of there. That is uh, quite a bit of fluid. So that's just way too much for the, um, the burner that I'm going to be hooking this up to, which is this thing here. This is the burner that I'm going to be hooking this nozzle up to. I'm going to be hooking it into this end. Typically, when I would run this thing, I would use just the oil vaporization technique and where the heat from the combustion chamber liner would vaporize the oil. The problem with that is that this thing runs on waste oil and waste oil is, is exceedingly dirty, filthy stuff. Uh, motor oil in general, I think, is loaded with a lot of additives that um, stay behind after they're combusted. I have a video of this thing cut open where you can see what I'm talking about, what, what goes on in one of these things after just 20 gallons or so of waste oil. There is a lot of filth and buildup. And what that does is inhibits the vaporization of the oil and then you get to a point where when this thing's running, it's got oil spraying out of the front and that's about the only way you can keep it lit. So the vaporization coil also, I don't think went very well. It was clogging up on me or something. I don't know what was going on. It could have been that my filter was clogged. I haven't got to the bottom of that yet. This pump, when I took it apart, the inlet port was completely clogged despite the fact that I had filtered the oil. Um, the substances that clogged up the system were a very small like hair like material so I haven't yet got to the bottom of whether or not the vaporization coil was okay and it was just my pump that was clogged I don't know but either way I want to go ahead and try a spray nozzle just like in an old furnace or something so we're going to give this nozzle here a shot. I'm going to hook it up to this pump, which uh, currently is just spraying way too much oil and I'm not getting hardly any atomization. And I would turn it up on high, but I'm kind of scared to because I've already done that and as you can see, <laughs> as a result, it blew the hose out of the um, discharge. So I had to build a copper extension because the gator teeth aren't, um, whoa, and some air in there or something. Weird. Thanks, prone to air leaks. So anyway, yeah, I don't know if the vaporization coil was a fail or not now, which is kind of sucks. If you've seen the video on this device where I had the vaporization coil in it, it did seem to kind of run okay, but um, I think it maybe needed more coil. Um, and one of the uh, viewers suggested wrapping the coil on the outside of the combustion chamber which would probably been a better deal because that way it doesn't get as much gunk on it because it was also heavily caked up with stuff 
So we're gonna see how the spray nozzle system does. We already have footage of this thing running with the vaporization coil. So I'm not gonna attempt to use this spray jet because I'm pretty sure that the amount of oil that I usually run on is like to where the motor will just barely move. That's about the amount of oil that my system runs on. Looks like I got a clog again too. I'll show you what this tip here is consisted of. Now the tip that we just seen there is very similar to a rocket engine injection port, which um, pretty much works, oops, sorry, like this. You have a plate with a dimple in it. Like this. That, that's the top cap of that nozzle. I'm drawing this through the camera, which is a real pain, so bear with me here. And then you have these small holes that are drilled into the sidewall of that dimple. This is the geometry of the nozzle we just observed in operation. And then what happens is, is the jets spray out like this and impact each other. And I believe that's what's responsible for that fan-like spray that we see. That's what we're looking at now. Now I drilled the holes too big. And as a result, I had to smash it down a little bit. Let me get some oil off this thing. My camera is just horrible for taking small photos, which I hate. That's one of the things that uh, makes me miss my uh, Android phone. There they are. See those little holes? There's still a little bit of oil blocking your view there, but those holes essentially uh, are facing each other. Just like you would see in a rocket engine, they would have like hundreds of these little dimples on a back plate and some would be oxygen and some would be fuel, whether it be hydrogen or whatever. And that's how their ejection nozzles look or injection nozzles, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to go ahead and chop this thing off of here and uh, we're going to hook up this other nozzle and see what it does. Hopefully it works a lot better.
so well that I seem to have eradicated the need for a blower altogether. It's going to be hard on my compressor running it for hours at a time though. I'm worried about that. So it is an oil reservoir compressor so but there you have it. No more electric pumps for me. It might even be the end for blowers too. That is a uh, end to the day actually. I'm going to build another mock-up. It seems that the functionality of the device is highly dependent on the position of this spray nozzle. I don't know if you've seen me modulating the position or not, but it was very picky on where that combustor had to be. I might even try a longer straight tube, I don't know yet. Probably not. 